Hello, I'm Grace Vandenberg. How to write subplots and what mistakes to avoid. A subplot is a secondary plot to your novel, a short substory that plays out along and in conjunction with the primary story. That will ultimately be your book and main focus. At this stage, what you're going to want to do is take a step back and ask the question: Can the integrity of my main story survive and deliver its purpose without the subplot? Your answer should be yes, but you'll still want to add the subplot for the purposes of flow, continuity. And spice, meaning added entertainment, thrills and spills. Characters. This is a good place to add flashbacks to past events that either connect to the current events playing out, and will give crystal clear clarity and/or provide an understanding as to why the person is a certain way, or about to do something outrageous. Think girl with the dragon tattoo. Within societal standards, she's not a risk to society. The backstory, the flashbacks, the reason being, explaining the reason for her attitude, the current actions, while providing details as to why she is on a crusade for revenge. In this story, for example, we see dramatics, roller coaster emotions, anxiety. Empathy, vulnerability, loss and gain, and a heck of a lot of complexities. Because she's had a hard life and known a great deal of injustice, we feel for her, connect to her. We understand that could be us with a slight turning of the table, fate, destiny. So we invest her emotions and want her to win. Because if it was us, we'd want us to win. We get to understand, within the realms of our knowing right from wrong. We even get to see why she's extracting revenge and want her to. This is humanity speaking to us from the pages and/or the screen. In this case, it is the subplot that shows us she's a wrong woman, not a nutcase. It's that subplot that wins us over. The woman in this story is a tough cookie, kick-ass, mess-up kind of gal. She doesn't wear high heels or wears pink lipstick or even sexy lingerie. Her femininity is a little amiss. If she were all tough, with a bad attitude, going in all guns ablaze, we probably wouldn't like her. It would be too much. But the subplot explores the past story, which provides us with clarity. This presents us with our softer side. We see dimension, personality, vulnerability, fear, injury, a wronged human being, just trying to attain justice for that was rightfully hers and had been let down by the system. Character depth is the greatest benefit to subplots. Ask yourself, how did you feel watching that movie when the little girl who ultimately grew up to be a kick-ass warrior was being abused as a child, pouring gas over a car, and her mother got in trouble for protecting her child? And from that abuse, the already wrong child is further wronged by the system, the system designed to protect children. Relationships. In this case, we have the girl's mother who ends up in an elderly person's home. In contrast to her homosexual relationships, seeking human and physical comfort, we see her vulnerability. In comparison to the relationship with the man, in position, taking advantage of that position. All before you get to the journalist's input and their investigations. That's a lot of characters and relationships to explore and entangle clearly and concisely. Example: Take the mother away from the story. The story can still be told without her, but the mother touch is the sentimental emotion 
and thought-provoking aspect that hits home. Realism Personally, I don't enjoy sci-fi because they're not realistic and I have nothing to connect to. Other people love them. It's personal choice. But to some degree, it's best each story has something most of the masses can invest in. Example, you're in outer space, in a spaceship, with aliens. There's nothing there for me to relate to. I don't know many aliens personally, but if the story implemented a trip to Earth or showed sun, sea, and forest, there's something right there that can catch my hold and my attention. But more importantly, relatability comes from the characters, the personalities, and their stories, their challenges, the good and the bad. It helps us connect to the story. We need roller coaster adrenaline soaring through our veins because that's ultimately what life is. How I personally achieve the roller coaster in my novels is by keeping it simple so I don't lose the integrity of my message. Not meaning the overall message, but the message I'm portraying regarding each main character. Start each new chapter with a completely different emotion that had end in chapter prior. Simple technique: if you start a chapter on a high, end on a low. If you start on a low, end on a high. Key point: there's only so much misery a person, a reader, can take before getting depressed with the the low and the down. And sometimes it can be too relatable. But that's not for the necessarily for the author to decide. In my debut novel, I started with a bang, a rape scene. It was the easiest way for me to start off with suspense, because at that time it was my first book. I didn't really know how to delay that, so I went in straight, head first, with the most provocative scene I could think of. Provoking the questions from the reader: How did she get here? Why is this happening? I already portrayed a victim, a wronged woman. From there, most people, by human nature, want to know: Does she attain justice? That's already a lot of human emotion that's invested. In one in-your-face scene. And I got a lot of abuse and stick for this scene too. Trust me, but it was worth it. What's your theme? What message are you trying to convey? For instance, take the 1990s movie, Julia Roberts sleeping with the anime. Is the main character weak, feminine, sensitive, delicate? And bit by bit, life's lessons teaches her to stand up for herself and fight back. By the end, she's a strong, robust, brave woman in her own right, never to be harmed again. Does the story end with admiration? Most stories should. Don't allow subplots to overcomplicate a story. The end of the story always encompasses the resolve. And even if you're going into a book series, there should still be some degree of resolve and a cliffhanger. It can't just end dead, stagnant. Hopefully, this one is easy for you because most people know the ending before they even know where the entire story and journey begins. Happy writing, my friends! Until next time, I'm Grace Vandenberg.